Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel. I hope you've had a wonderful day or are having a wonderful day depending on where you are in the world. Um, this video has um, been asked to be done by uh, one of the people that has been following along with the tutorial series regarding the Marvel comic book app that we're creating. If you've not seen any of those videos, um, I'll put the links below in the description. But this is around um, one of the communication tools when we make the request to Marvel is um, we need to create an MD5 hash of some tokens, uh, some keys and a timestamp. So I've done this video, there's no code being created. I've done this video just to try and give an explanation as to what is happening in the MD5 stuff. So if we look at the code that we've got in on the left hand side of the screen here let's just move that over slightly to the left great so if we look over at this stuff here we've got um on line 12 we are creating our uh, gateway.marvel.com base url now part of the um get characters function is we have to build up this url with an endpoint and a query string at the end of it so if we jump into our function on line 23, um, line 24, we have to create a timestamp and that's part of the um, query string that we'll be, uh, we build up. So if you look at 20, line 26, we have this um, let called uh, query string and part that let is just a string and we have the question mark which will be appended to after the, um, the URL then TS represents a timestamp. We have to provide Marvel with a timestamp. Um, and then our API key, which you would get from Marvel. When you register on the Marvel developer website, I'll put the link to that below as well. Um, when you register there, they will give you a private key and a public key. Uh, and then um, it's the public key has to be provided in as part of the um, query string that you would, would be building. So after the public key, we have the ampersand and hash equals, and that's where we're going to build up a combination, um, a combination of a timestamp private key and a public key. Um, in this instance, we have this build hash token function, which is actually on line 30 of the request handler class. So this build hash token actually takes in the timestamp that we created in the previous function. Uh, then we have on line 31, we have uh, um, something called an unhashed string, a variable or a let called unhashed string. And that is a combination of a timestamp plus our private key plus our public key. And then we return a string which are, is but we actually call our md5 function and we pass in the let from the line above so if we jump into our uh, our function now um, one of the most common questions I've been asked is where did I get this common crypto library from it's not a library it's not a cocoa pod it's not a Carthage the only third party dependency we are using in this app is the SD web image, which I think I spoke about in um, part two. Um, that and we're using that via we're installing that via Swift Package Manager as well. So if we scroll to the bottom of this of our folder tr structure folder tree, we have at the very bottom here Swift Package Dependencies, and I'll, I've got it highlighted now. And we are using SD web image. That is the only third party that we're using. So this import common crypto is actually part of um, the iOS SDK and the Mac OS SDK. I think it's part of, it might be part of Watch OS as well. I'm not massively familiar with Watch OS, so if I'm wrong, please correct me. Um, <clears throat> so we've got this global function called MD5. People have asked me why have I made it global. There's no reason. You can you can put it as a, a string extension if you wanted to. You could even put it as your own class. But um, I've just made it a global function. Um, there's no reason why I've done that. It, it, 
for me, it's just easier. You don't have to initialize a class to access it. You can just go MD5 and then be done with it. Pass in your string and be done with it. So I'll give you a quick overview of what is happening in this class. So line 12, we're declaring the function. Pretty basic stuff. It We've called it MD5 and it takes in a string and it returns a string. Then line 14, we uh, the str.data is actually an optional. So that's taking the string that we've passed in and trying to turn that into data. If that fails, then we will just return an empty string as we can see on line 45. Um, <coughs> so I've put some comments in here as well um, because it is quite involved what's happening and um, is easily you can easily forget what's what's going on so this digest variable that we've got here is an array of um, unsigned 8-bit integers um, and it will only it basically will just contain 16 zeros um, and that's what this line that I've highlighted now is is actually doing so then on uh, line 21 we've got um, this basically performs a, a, a digest calculation and places the results of the caller uh, sorry in the caller supply uh, in a in a caller supplied buffer for the digest or MD um, <coughs> so this basically the reason we have this is because it actually returns a, a, a variable but we're not we're not actually using the result of the call we don't actually result use the result of the call in this so yeah there's plenty of comments. Uh, in actual fact, I'm going to leave a direct link to this hash class in the, or this hash dot swift file, I should say, and the, the, the function. I'll leave the link in the description below so people can just, if they want to read through it, they're more than welcome. If they just want to copy and paste it, it's entirely up to them. Um, and this cc hyphen md5 is actually part of the common crypto. So if we yeah if we just command and shift and jump to definition uh, command click and jump to definition we can see public function public func cc md5 and then if we look at the top here um, where where it shows you where you are in the in the in the um, uh, the SDK it's got here common crypto uh, as part of common digest and then inside there there's a function called cc md5 and like i say it's all part of the um it's all part of the ios sdk and the mac os sdk then in line 30 we're just creating an empty string and we're just calling it md5 string that's it it's just, it's just completely empty and then we uh, basically the digest here that we get of the, the 16 zeros we we are trying to unpack each byte in the digest um in the digest array and add them to the md5 string so by doing that we'll, we will actually loop over that so that's what lines 32 to 34 are doing they're actually just creating a loop and then we'll just plus equals like append to the to the string and build up our string that way and then finally lines 30 um 37 we're just actually doing a check on the hash um and this is just purely done for an example um and 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 that's it and basically as you can see here md5 uppercase hashed is um uh equal to that that string there else um we'll just say that md5 hash does not match so if you've been actually compile if you've actually been following along you would actually see that this line 40 is being executed in um, the console so if we were to build and run our comic book app i'll just do that now you will actually see it pop up in the console and say print md5 hash does not match that's because the hash that we're generating does not actually match the the hash that's on line uh, 17 so this top part of the if is just to check um and it's, it's just by an example we could actually pass the hash that we're generating in as a as a string but we're, we're not doing that so this is this if is completely irrelevant you could comment that out and it would still work perfectly fine um so once our uh once our um let's make this a bit smaller 
vertical and we'll slide that over there so once this as actually once the simulator is actually fully loaded and started running you will actually see in the console that um line 40 gets executed and just says this this does not match and then finally on um line 42 whatever the result of the for loop is on line 30 to 30 32 to 34 we just return that value and and, and that is pretty pretty much it um, um that's not going to work because we've still got it set up from a previous video so if we go into our scene delegate now and um uncomment this line here like so and comment this line here and change that to home <coughs> and then build and run we should see in the console the print statement that says um, this hash does not match so let's go back to our um, hash.swift there you go and we've hit the breakpoint um, and there you go um, md5 hash does not in the bottom of the, in the console we have their hot I've just highlighted it. MD5 hash does not match. <coughs> but if we were to do PO uh, or print or print out MD5 string, we'll find that we have a hash MD5 string. And that is good enough to then go on and talk to um, Marvel and bring in our data. So hopefully... Like I say, I will leave the link to this direct file in the description below. But hopefully, the um, what I've just briefly gone over is answering some of the questions that people have been having around the um, how how is a hash generated, why are we generating it, and stuff like that. Um, like I said in in the um, the part two, MD5 is not the best option. And as you can see from this warning here, um, MD5, a uh, CC underscore MD5 was deprecated in iOS 13. This function is cryptographically broken and should not be used in security context. Clients should migrate to SHA-256 or stronger. So as it's saying, pretty much everyone's using SHA-256 and there's lots of other ones like Blowfish and, and there's lots of other cryptographic um um, hashing mechanisms that can be used but because for whatever reason Marvel are explicitly asking us to do an MD5 hash for us to communicate with their endpoints we have to do an MD5 hash um, like I say it's not the best option in the world but hopefully you kind of um, you kind of understand why um, so yeah basically that, that that's it hopefully that's cleared up some bits and pieces um, so yeah like i say um i'm really grateful for the question hopefully i've given a, a bit of a better explanation as to what is going on with this md5 um hashing mechanism um and like i say uh if, if you've got any other questions i'm more than happy to answer it and go through and and do other videos with with this sort of detail uh in them so just briefly going over it again line 14 we are we are trying to produce some data um and we have to unwrap that and that's why we do an if let str data that str data is the unwrapped value if that fails on line 45 we'll just return an empty string then line 21 to 26 uh, 27 sorry um we are calling a function or a closure sorry which um apple provide us which is called with unsafe bytes and that uh, I, as I've put in the comment above, it says calls the given closure with a pointer to an underlying unsafe bytes of string data contigu contiguous storage. Um, and then we use the CC MD5 um, func um, function, which is part of the common crypto, part of the common crypto import, which we've um, which is part of the iOS and Mac OS SDKs. And then we're using the dollar uh, zero, so it's like a the same you would in a flat map or or map or or something like that, and using the dot base address. And then, in actual fact, we can look at the the if we look at the function, we can see what we need to pass in. That will probably give us a 
better explanation. <coughs> so this needs um, a data, uh, unsafe raw pointer. So that's like some old C, C sharp type thing. So the common crypto is actually probably based around a C type library. Um, len is the how long it is. And the MD is a, a mutable pointer, so it can be manipulated. Um, it's a, the mutable pointer is actually um, needs to be of type unsigned integer. Um, but yeah, because it's mutable, it can be changed. So if we go back, um, and yeah, so that's why we're passing in the digest. We will pass in the digest, which we create on line 17, which is just an unsigned 8-bit integer that contains 16 zeros. And that do some wacky hashing. Um, and then, uh, like I say, on line 30, we just create an empty string. And then uh, line 32 to 34, we just loop over our digest, which is create, it was our, which is our all our zeros. Um, and we'll give it a string format. Um, and populate uh, append our for each loop will append to the empty string that we create on line 30 um, and then just return it on line 42 like i say li lines 37 to line 41 are totally for example testing um, and as you saw in the console from from the um, build that we got uh, md5 hash does not match which is correct that hash does not match the one the example i've given but i this is just for debugging purposes you you could change that to the hash that you actually generate but because we are using a timestamp it will always change so it's really difficult for um, us to be consistent and create the same hash every time it's extremely difficult to do that and i think that's probably the purpose of um why marvel have said send it to send us a timestamp as well because it would change each time um, obviously the private and the public keys are static but each time you would send a new request that timestamp would change because it's done in a time interval since 1970 so that's a number of seconds since 1970 and obviously with each second that passes that number would change so the hash would change it's not the strongest but hopefully what i've just gone over with you is um gives you a really good understanding of what is going on in this particular function on this particular class yes i should have done it in part two and i apologize but um i just sort of thought drop this in uh, to speed up uh, speed up time but actually when i think about it this is extremely crucial to how you make a request and get it back um I'll give, I'll put the, like I say, I'll put the direct link to this file in the description below. And I, I really appreciate the people that have asked questions about this and asked me to do a video about this. Hopefully this video has given you more insight and been, um, made things a lot more clearer for you guys. Um, if it hasn't, please uh, let me know and I'm more than happy to go into even more detail if, if possible. This is an extremely high level um, overview of everything that's happening here but um yeah please keep coming with the questions i'm really enjoying answering them and um if you like the video then please give us a thumbs up if you dislike it like i say please thumbs down i'm open to the structured criticism and if you have not yet to subscribe to the channel please 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 do subscribe to the channel i'm absolutely flabbergasted that 11 people have actually subscribed to my baffling and waffling on so this is purely amazing i'm really enjoying it so like please do if you haven't in if you're finding these interesting and you're learning stuff from them please subscribe because it, it does mean a lot to me and i can't believe the amount of people that are actually watching me is absolutely amazing um but anyway, um, I've waffled on enough. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and a wonderful evening or day wherever you are in the world. And thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.